good evening to everybody on behalf of philosophy family i would like to extend a very hearty welcome to all the viewers on sunday webinar it's my pride privilege to welcome today to professor r krishnamurthy to speak on a very good topic that is uh, at the feet of the master and i think uh, it seems to be the philosophical reflection of jiddu krishnamurthy anyway um, i extend my gratitude to professor romawani dr srinivas dr k bhaskaran and the organizers of philosophy family to be in the sunday webinar to witness the academic program of philosophy family so today we have <coughs> invited professor r krishnamurthy the former professor of english madura college madurai under madurai kamra university you know professor r krishnamurthy had a teaching career for more than more than 3 decades in the same academic institution who had uh, many reputation in the same institution professor krishnamurthy did his uh, masters in english mphil phd bachelor of law and he has also obtained the master of science so with a lot of qualification professor krishnamurthy has dedicated himself for the cause of the students for the academic cause and for the spirituality to spread the spiritual atmosphere of the country so i extend my gratitude to professor r krishnamurthy to accept our invitation to be the speaker of today's webinar and i extend my gratitude to srinivasan to make a connectivity with him so today i extend my welcome to all the senior teachers of her country and abroad to be with us to witness this very beautiful academic program so with this once again i welcome all the senior teachers of her country and i welcome professor r krishnamurthy to join for the first time as a speaker in the philosophy family i extend my welcome to professor pramod kumar das the arbini convener and host of philosophy family with the main architect behind all kinds of philosophical reflection in this platform i extend my welcome to professor dr k omnar rao the regular moderator of philosophy family the editor of the journal series of journals of philosophy family so with this may i request professor r krishnamurthy to speak on the scheduled topic over to professor krishnamurthy sir you are not audible sir sir please unmute sir sorry sorry vanakkam namaste good evening to all i am very happy to be in this small elite group of leading luminaries of education i feel small before this uh, this great assembly anyway i'll try my do my best to come to up to your expectations i am an ordered man i am reading certain books on theosophy and books by uh, talks by jk jitu kishamuti so i'll begin now i'll 
talk for an hour maximum and then i will stop then i will invite you for your discussion my talk will not be a routine talk it will be a discussion you can always uh, through the moderator ask me questions that's not, that's not a problem now before i talk about j kishamurthy i would like to talk to you about for a few minutes about theosophical society which discovered jk theosophical society was founded in 1875 that is towards the end of 19th century by two persons important persons colonel alcott and madam blavatsky alcott is an american and madam blavatsky is a russian princess so they with other friends promoted this theosophical society at the prodding of the masters are the realized souls i would call them which are who are invisible but conquer death who are immortal and uh, they assembled this group about 14 and they started this theosophical society in new york in 1875 then they moved over to bombay in 1880 to find a suitable place for them to establish theosophical society they were not satisfied with bombay or mumbai and they moved on to adyar in chennai in 1875 and they established the theosophical society what are the objects of theosophical society first is to form a nucleus of the universal brotherhood of humanity without distinction of race creed sex caste or color may i repeat that to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity without distinction of race creed sex cast or color to, then second object to encourage the study of comparative religion there are so many religions in this world so they said to encourage the study of comparative religion philosophy and science these are the second objective the third objective is very interesting to investigate unexplained laws of nature and the powers latent in man the third is to investigate explain the laws of nature and the powers latent in man these are the three objects and uh, madam blavatsky wrote number of books eyes is unveiled secret doctrine etc of which uh, my brother dr sinwas is very familiar and he gave a few talks on this on this group and she said there is going to be messiah our world teacher and his arrival is around the corner our mission is to prepare the world to receive him so that is the the statement by the first general secretary or corresponding secretary as she was called madam hetrona blavatsky and this was well received by many people thought the messiah is around the corner and this is the background now and let's come come to this india madurapalli this was a small village in then madras presidency now andhra pradesh is now in situr district or annamaya district i am not sure but it is a very small hamlet then in those days madras presidency included the whole of andhra parts of Tel- telangana including vaisak and even up to orissa bahrampur on sea and most most of kerala and bangalore and a lot of problem so madras presidency was very huge and in that madurapalli there was a couple narayanaya and sanjeevamma 
Narayana is a graduate in chemistry from Madras Christian College those days. And graduates were very handful. And he was a clerk or somebody, and then he rose to become a Tasildar, a powerful post indeed, in that village, in that area. He was transferred from Kadapa to Kadapa and other places also, wherever he moved, the family moved. But their ancestor place was near Madanapalli. Jiddu is a family name. See, uh, the, many of them call their name Sarvapalli Radhakrishnan. Sarvapalli is the name of the village from which the second president hailed. There was that uh, Nageswar Rao, the famous cine actor. He is called Akni Nageswar Rao. Named, named to... So, Jiddu is the, I don't know whether it's the name of the village, it's the title they have adopted. Right, let's leave that. And uh, he was the eighth child of his parents. So, the, promptly they have named him Krishnamurti. See, the, after in the Hindu tradition, the eighth child was born. And this and Sanjeev Bhai had a premonition, this child is going to be unique. And uh, the astrologer also predicted the same. He will be a great man some, some day. And even from the childhood, he had some occult experiences or occult powers or ESP, extrasensory powers. He was able to say, talk to his sister who is no more. And uh, he saw so many things. And he was aloof. He, even with his friends, he walked long distances. That was his passion, which he carried till the end. And he was very charitable disposition. When a beggar came, he used to give him lavishly. Charitable disposition. But otherwise, he was a very, very ordinary child. Now, what happened was, he had another younger brother also. They were, they, they were named him Nityananda. They were the original pair. They had so many children. One child was not mentally stable. And the first one was a, a very successful uh, man. He became a doctor, medical doctor later on. And he served in the First and Second World War. He belonged to our India Medical uh, Services. That's it. Now, these eighth and ninth children, they were close. Nityananda and they were close from the birth. And they were together always. And what unfortunately, Sanjay Uman died. This man was crestfallen. So he didn't know what to do. He didn't want to marry again. So they moved to Chennai, Adyar, where Narsimha thought he would get a job in the Theosophical Society because he was already a member. And by the time he came there, uh, Madam Anibasan became the president of the society, second president, after death of Colonel Alcott. So the, the family was struggling to live somewhere near Adyar, near the Thiasur society. And somehow he, uh, this man was able to get his job as an assistant secretary in that big establishment called Thiasur society. The Thiasur society is a big place, about 350 acres of land. It is almost a forest. And they lived, not in the quarters, but somewhere outside. And uh, he was used to he used to uh, play Ch Krishnamurti, the ch young boy, and his younger brother Nityananda used to play in the Adyar beach. And there, C. W. Leadbeater, a clairvoyant, a close associate of Dr. Basant, Annie Basant, saw this boy and said his aura is pure. There's no trace of selfishness about it. That was the year in which he was discovered. February 1909, Jake Krishnamurti was discovered to be the potential world teacher. And he was trained. And so, let me tell wrote to Anibasit, and Anibasit would like, means interest to see them. And uh, let me introduced J. Krishnamurti, the young boy, to Annie Besant. Besant said, first words she said, Come, my son. And she said, Amma. And there the relationship continued. 
So I would like to divide JK's life into three segments. The first is birth to meeting of Annie Besant. That is from 1895 to 1909. From the 1909 to 1929, third August, where he dissolves the Order of the Star and proclaims that his aim is to set the man free, unconditionally, absolutely free. That's what. Now, while he was there under that, so Dr. Bassett took under her wings both the brothers, as J.K. and Nityananda. You see, you see, Christians cannot adopt a child as per our legal system. But they have got a Guardians and Wards Act. As per the Act, she became the Guardian. Gladly gave the nursery, the Naranaya gave them the two sons. So they will be educated in the best schools and best way. And they will find a very good position in their lives. He did not you know about the world teacher and all that. And from that day onwards, Anipasan said, I will take care of your sons. And she really took care. She gave them the best and nothing but the best. Best food, best, 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 best. Whatever the whims and fancies of the young boys was, they were satisfied. They had bicycle, they used to play tennis, all the luxuries of a very, very upper class. And the dresses were different and they they, they were learned to speak only English. They're not a word of Telugu or Tamil. Because the mother tongue of JK was Telugu. And he was tutored by the best. Arundale was his history teacher. And the Shastri was the Sanskrit teacher. And then yeah, I forget the name. Then there was the Nilakanta Shastri, who was the uh, Surinana Shastri, who was the history teacher. All the best. They were they were taught in the Basant under the tutor under the watchful eyes of Dr. Basant in the Adyar. They did not go out. The teachers came and he learnt. And, and and we are told the masters also came in their astral body the, during the nights or whenever they felt it's convenient and taught them of the various things which are hidden for the ordinary men. So he had so much of education. And when he was 14, he wrote a small book, which many people disbelieved. But he wrote this book called At the Feet of the Master. And he gave it to the Dr. Besant. And she published it in December 1910. It's a beautiful preface. What is this? He's a man, young, young boy, but very, very mature in soul. He has the, he has the good fortune of learning from the masters or the evolved souls, but conquered death. And his book is valuable. And she says one thing, teaching can be fruitful if it is lived. And J. Krishnamurti has lived it since it fell from his master's lips. This is the thing. Now, this was the preface by Dr. Besant. And, and there is a note. This book is intended for to those who knock. To those who knock. This book is available everywhere. If you go to Google, can if you say it, the English text of at the feet of the master, the whole thing will come. And if you go to YouTube, and if you uh, say the audio book of at the feet of the master, the book will come. It will, uh, you can listen to the yes, uh, the, uh, the uh, book on the uh, this earphone. And to those who knock, the book is in there. And there's a preface, or sorry, there's a quotation from the Vedas. 
which many of us know asatoma satgamaye tamasoma jodirgamaye mrityoma amrutam gamaye and he himself translated from the unreal lead me to the real from darkness lead me to light from death lead me to immortality when this book was published there's many criticism many said this cannot be this could not have been written by a 14 year old boy who is a stranger to english language it's not and it's published under the pseudonym of alcyon a l c o i o n e alcyon alcyon means brightest star that's all and there's a short forward and the forward he said i have set my foot upon the path the path here means the road to the knowledge of god or know to to discover the plan of gods why how this world functions how this universe is functions the whole universe the prapanjam is functioning and he said this book is not mine these are the words of the master which i imbibed and i had written in my language and many people said this is not a book and all jk also never talked about this book after his separation from the theosophical society in 1929 august he never talked about this book and kfi or krishnamurthy foundation in india or abroad had distanced themselves from this book so this book is a product out and out a product of the theosophical society now what does he say he says to walk on the path one must have four things one is discrimination number two desirelessness third is good conduct and fourth is love may i repeat discrimination desirelessness good conduct and love these are the things which is necessary for a man to evolve and to walk on the the path of ancient wisdom now let's go we take one by one what is this discrimination see discrimination is an, in the modern context has got a different context different connotation see we are discriminated women are discriminated in india certain sections of society are discriminated in india handicapped people are discriminated everywhere they are not able to get into tra- public transport so we say discrimination in the negative sense or on the connotation that it's not good that's not a good word i am discriminated because of my color because of my caste i should have got that boast but i belong to another race so all this is not. what is discrimination it means the ability to analyze the thing before you and arrive at the conclusion whether it's true or not in tamil there's a thirukkural which says eppurul yaar yaar vai ketterum appurul meipurul kaanbadhu kaanbadhu arivu which what does it mean whatever somebody says you should not accept it face value you have to test it find it whether it's true and then accept it so discrimination in that sense is used why we should have discrimination that's it he says discrimination leads men to enter the path the path of discovery what is that to be able to do he says there are only two kinds of people in this world those who know and those who do not know what is that those who know about the knowledge of god's plan for men i repeat the, those who know the knowledge of god's plan for men for god has a plan and that plan is evolution so if you want to walk on the path of a evolution the first quality you must have is or you cultivate is in discrimination without which you cannot move ahead 
So discrimination is a basic thing. And we must always be with the people who are on God's side. Standing for, who are all people, they are because they stand for good and resisting evil. These are the two things. A man of discrimination will stand for good. Not only that, will resist evil. And working for evolution and not for selfishness. He has to work for the evolution. Man has to achieve Godhead. Man has, been able, has come this so far this much. And with the help of the ancient wisdom, he must evolve to a Godhead. That is ambition. If he is on the God's side, he is one of us. If he is not, he is not of us. So this is the satsang. Like-minded people with whom we must cooperate and work. And there are many people who are following the unreal instead of the... What is unreal? The worldly firm, fame, power, money. All these are unreal. So the man has to learn to distinguish between the unreal and real. And discrimination is the first step. So he has to... And what does he has to do further? He must know what's right and wrong. And he must know uh, already which path he has to choose, travel. But the body and the man are two. We have got the famous saying, spirit is willing, but flesh is weak. Understand? Even though you want to study JK, but our, our many worldly mundane matters prevent us from doing that. So, you must be on the on the strong path of controlling your body. That's very important. But keep your body clean. Because body is the vehicle on which you ride. Like a hunter who maintains his horse very carefully, who rubs its means and all that, who takes care of it, gives proper food, Food, clean food. Like that, you must take care of your body. Take care of your body by giving clean food, be making it clean, and always be fit, fit and proper for any action. This is only then you can do a walk on the path. So, but at the same time, you must be able to control the body. What is called Itcha Hill. Indriyangal. There are so many things. We have to control them. And we have to work. The body is the animal, the horse on which you travel. And man has many desires. Desires make you to be angry, to say sharp words, to feel jealous. You have to get rid of them. Equanimity and poise must be always there. You must. Because if you are greedy, if you use sharp words and hurt others, and lust for money, all this will lead to depression. Not success. Not peace. They lead to this depression. And you must be always be careful. Careful. You must pity and discriminate between the important and the unimportant. See, what is important? Important is do the God's work. Dictated through masters. That's the work we have to do. And we must not do anything else. And uh, you must know what is really useful and not really useless. And we must remember that it's nobler work to feed the soul. It's a very noble work to feed the soul and there should not be any complacency about it. And there is thing. God is wisdom as well as love. God is the embodiment of all jnana.
wisdom and all love shivam shiva means love god is love and god is also he must know with that consciousness he must walk we must always remember the saying only a wise man can be wisely helpful then we must be true in our thought word and deed anything other than these things should be avoided true in thought word and deed you only then we can walk on the path untrue thoughts many foolish superstitions should be avoided later on he says what superstition the the caste is a superstition so it should be abolished it is a without bensing mantras he comes heavily in the, in the last chapter and moreover he is not he should not think for himself because superstition is one of the greatest evils in the world one of the chains which bound you to the past you must break them all that and then you must remember you must be true in speech accurate and without exaggeration accurate without this must be the past and think well before you see wants us think well before speaking lest you should fall into inaccuracy that's the thing you must never commit a mistake because we are going to walk on the light of truth and the light of truth should shine through you as sunlight shines through clear glass that's what he says so learn to distinguish god in everyone and everything the man may be bad in so many things but he must have may have also a good quality he must discover i am uh, tempted to say a story from mahabharata one day krishna asked duryodhana to find one good man in the entire city and come back in the evening at the same time called vidishra dharmaputra said go back old city and find out whether this a bad man the evening or sandhya kalam the both of them return duryodhana comes and says o oh krishna there is not a single good, good man in the whole city kastinapura every fellow is bad okay let's see then dharmaputra comes yudhishthira says krishna there is not a single bad man in this world this country everybody is good so you discover the goodness in the other man that's what he says you discover the goodness in others and not the evil in others so what you must do is there's a spark of divine life in everybody it is your endeavor to arouse it in everybody you must see that that in this inner text i would like to tell the this distinguished audience about the universal prayer of brotherhood <coughs> drafted by dr basant she became the second president in 1909 and she said we must have a new prayer is completely secular not pertaining to any particular religion but applicable to all and she said oh hidden life vibrant in every atom i'll repeat that oh hidden life <coughs> vibrant in every atom oh hidden light shining in every creature oh hidden love embracing all in oneness 
May each who feels himself as one with thee, know he is also one with every other. Every theosophist knows this by heart, and every theosophical society meeting begins with this prayer. So, we must arouse the goodness in others, not the evil thoughts in others. We must, we must not only be good in ours to ourselves, but we must arouse the good thoughts, good words, good actions from others. So, that is our motive. Now, we go to the second part of the thing book. The book has four chapters as I said. First chapter is discrimination. Second chapter is desirelessness. Third chapter is good conduct. Fourth and last is love. What is desirelessness? Desirelessness is dis different from absence of desire. For example, a an Eskimo who lives in North Arctic may not know the taste of Rasagulla. You may not know what is Rasagulla or Gulab Jamun. So you will not have any desire. But similarly, a, a pure vegetarian brought and brought up as a vegetarian for generations. He may not know what are the pleasures of biryani. So that is absence of desire. He may not have any desire for that. He will have desire for masal dosa. So desirelessness is, is conquering the desire of the thing which you know. So you know that coffee is very good, stimulating, and then you give up. That becomes you become desirelessness of coffee. You are not, you don't like it. You don't desire it anymore. So that is the desirelessness. So desirelessness, man has got so many desires from the day he is born, and he has to conquer the desires to see that he becomes a godhead. So, on the easiest is his wealth, power, and all these worldly pleasures. This is the error to which you, the society may lead you to, to which you must not fall. The, you must have money, that's a different thing. But avarice is wrong. Greed is wrong. Lust for power is wrong. You may have power, you may acquire power to do good things with a sense of detachment. That's what he says. Detached attachment is what he said. All selfish desire binds, J.K. says. All selfish desire binds you to this world, this, the, the, the cycle of karma. You come, Puranavi Jananam, Puranavi Maranam. We have to get out of that. Until you have got rid of that ambition, desire, you are not wholly free. To devote yourself to the work of the master. So, we must become pure everywhere. You must do right things for the sake of the right. And without expecting any reward. I had helped that boy to write the... I paid the fees for the, the, for the last two semesters. Which helped him to complete his degree. But that fellow is ungrateful. Don't so say that. Because it is your nature to do good. Do good. Forget it. And do not carry it further. So do a good thing and forget. Don't remember and whether the fellow is grateful, whether the fellow appreciates, whether he talks about you and how it's your, what you call, your large-heartedness. All this is nonsense. If you wanted to help, help because it is your nature to help. Nothing, nothing because it will get publicity. Nothing, no, don't, don't do your thing because it will give you the paper publicity, media publicity, all sorts of nonsense. So, have Satisfies these three qualifications, then you speak. Our ways to learn. And he further says, to meddle in other man's business, 
to poke your nose other man's affairs and lead that leads to gossip this is the worst thing never do that never indulge in gossiping if you want to walk on the path you want to learn the ancient wisdom if you want to walk the knowledge of the all the rishis your your uh, the finger tips then first thing you must avoid is gossiping gossiping and chattering about useless things the other man has got full right and speech and action as long as he does not interfere with anyone so don't gossip about others don't talk about the persons who are not in the presence and don't accuse anybody of falsehood so you must think carefully before you open your mouth that is again i repeat true kind and helpful and then only thing then finally he says practice the virtue of silence learn the virtue of silence observing being silent is a virtue and practice that this is the thing now we come to third good conduct what's good conduct in the schools and colleges we give a conduct certificate where the head of institution will write very good excellent good satisfactory and if it's not good the boy's future is doomed he cannot go anywhere so the boys will be very careful so say he when that man is a tough guy will put you not satisfactory then you will finish but that is not the thing which you should do but what he says he says conduct has six aspects six what are they one is self control to the mind mind control your mind then control your action these are the first two then third and fourth tolerance and fourth is cheerfulness last two are one pointedness and finally confidence confidence if this if these are the things if you practice if you do th- these things then your conduct will be upright and straight what is the self control mind so mind is a monkey we say it jumps from one to another it comes to, it uh, comes from the jk's book to the third rate book you are not able to control your mind that be firm of that control by abhyasa by meditation dhyana and you have to control your mind and second thing when the having control of the mind don't stop that what watch what you do self control in action manam vaaku action karma so these are the two things are essential a calm mind means courage when the mind is calm it will be courageous bhagat singh was always courageous was he was unperturbed when they said tomorrow morning you have to be you will be hanged he said give me that book i want to finish that and when the jailer came i got two pages please wait so the calm mind means who has courage so you can face without fear the trials and difficulties of the path trials and difficulties of the path so you, you, you be calm see i'll tell you one another story alexander the great was a student of aristotle aristotle was a student of plato and plato was a student of socrates so that is the lineage and aristotle called alexander when he was about to go on conquering the world he said all right you are a king now go and conquer the world whatever you are. but wherever you go meet educated people people who have achieved wisdom and try to understand from them and also collect me books 
collect me some samples of uh, the, the botanical specimens. That's what he said. So, Aristotle said, uh, Alexander said, uh, yes, master, I will do that. And he came. He came to Syracuse, or some place, I forgot the name, where Diogenes, the great philosopher, was having sunbath on the seashore. Alexander was riding his famous horse, Bucephalus, which he tamed, and came near because he was told that the greatest man on the, the city was Diogenes, an old man. And Alexander goes, Diogenes, Alexander the Great has come. What do you want? He did not care. He kept quiet. Again he asked. He did not budge him. For third time, he asked, Diogenes, what do you want? I can give you anything you want. And Diogenes opened his eyes half and said, please move a little. But blocking the sun, having sun bath, and with the shadow of the you and your horse, cast me on me. So please move it little. The, other, the soldiers who were with him, the bodyguards, were very angry. They drew their swords. But Alexander calmed them. He is the man. He is the man who has conquered man. And moved away. So like that, the calm mind has a courage. And if without any botheration, they'll face the trials and difficulties on the path. They because they know that all evil is transitory. There is evil, but evil is not immortal or anything. They're transitory. They'll go. And you must always be cheerful. That's what he says. Now, so self-control of the mind, self-control of the action. You must mind your own business. And you must not interfere. The third thing is tolerance. Tolerance is a very, very important thing. You know, these books at the feet of the master, I'm told, that it is, dis, it is studied and discussed in the uh, many great business schools in India and abroad. And they try to imbibe these qualities. Tolerance. Tolerance is a very, very important thing for being a man, whatever you are. Because many a time, the quarrel between the husband and wife, father and son, between friends, because people lack tolerance. If you have tolerance, then definitely. When I was a great teacher once said, when I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Yes, as we grow old, we must become more mature. And we must see that we must look kindly, gently, tolerantly, Upon all, this is the one of the qualities. You must look kindly at all, gently and tolerantly. But upon a, whether he is a Buddhist or Jew or a Muslim, a whatever be the country, whatever be the race, please remember all of us are human beings. And cheerfulness. A man who believes in God must always be cheerful. He must not be a weeping fellow, always crying. I don't have this, I don't have that. Because the self-pity will kill your soul. What you must avoid is self-pity. Once you avoid self-pity, you can have the cheerfulness. Cheerfulness is Finding happiness in small things, in a flower blossoming, 
or the chirping of the bird, or the laughter of a child, all these things must make you happy. Be thick of them and cheerful. Be cheerful. Next thing is one pointedness. What's one point? They call it focus. When you do a thing, concentrate only on that. JK did it throughout his life. When you speak, concentrate on your speech. Whether your speech is audible, whether it's clear, whether it will be understood, whether it will lead to confusion. Be careful. So the one pointedness or being focused. See, I'll tell you another story. Dronacharya was teaching the Pandavas and Kauravas. And one day he said, I want you to shoot that parrot sitting on that mango tree. Then he asked Yudhishthira, Yudhishthira, what do you see? Oh, my master, I see the beautiful mango tree laden with mangoes, so many flowers, so many mangoes. And there, on the tree, there's a parrot. Then he, he said, Drona, the great Acharya said, please don't waste your arrow. You will not kill that. Then, after asking, exhausting all this, he asked Arjuna, what do you see? Oh, master, I see a bird, only its neck. I can, can I shoot now? No, you will definitely kill that. There is no need for that. So that is one-pointedness, being focused. If you are focused, then you are, half the battle is over. Then, this is the another reason. Then last thing in the, uh, the third chapter is confidence. When you have all these qualities, when naturally confidence will come. See, when you trust in God, you will not be uh, afraid of anything. So, confidence comes naturally. You must trust your master. Unless there is perfect trust, there cannot be a perfect flow of love and power. A husband must trust his wife. If he doesn't trust, marriage will collapse. That's 20 years, 30 years, what is it doesn't matter. Trust is necessary. The father must trust his son. Son trusts his father. See, the boy, the father throws up his son, let's say a six-month-old baby, and catches it. The, the, child, the baby laughs. Why? Why? Because he, the baby instinctively knows the father will catch him. So like that, trust is necessary. Confidence. For confidence, then only the perfect flow of love and power. So you must have confidence. You must trust yourself. <clears throat> you must trust yourself first. Yes, I can do it with the help of God at all. Because he repeats, you are a spark of God's own fire. And God who is almighty is in you. And because of this, nothing that you cannot do if you will. So, he said, you can walk on the path confidently. The last chapter is love. Krishnamurti, a bachelor, was adopted by a, or brought up by a foreign lady who lost his mother at young age, says about love. Love is the most important of all the qualifications. If love is strong in that person, then all other qualities will come naturally to him. All other qualities will come naturally. You know, love, what is the problem is, we do not know the difference between love and possession. You possess your wife, finished. If you love your wife, the marriage will blossom. Possessiveness, I say, finished. Let's do it together, blossoms. So, 
the love we do not know distinguish between love and possession i request you to read or refresh your mind with khalil gibran's prophet what are the father of the child or only instrument i mean disturbing i think somebody has unmuted himself so we, we must not possess this love that is the most important thing love if you really love then there will not be any gossip cruelty and superstition these are the enemies of love cruelty is causing harm to any living thing whether it's a plant or animal that is a crime according to kishamurthy against humanity and you must have only pure thoughts if you, are, if you think of the evil in another what three wicked things when you think of evil you are filling your neighborhood with evil thought instead of it good thought will clear it if you think a man is evil you are strengthening the evil in him and feeding that evil in you, him and if you fill your own mind with evil thoughts instead of good you hinder your own growth if you have got evil thoughts you will not grow so and he comes heavily against the superstition of casteism he said how can we do things if you are free that we are all children of god how can you say that somebody is lower than you all are equal whether it is intentional or unintentional cruelty cruelty is wrong cruelty must be abolished at everything at every stage and all this is because thoughtlessness we don't think think and act he says to save a man of few trouble he denies the wages to a worker a man must see that the worker is paid as soon as or when he completes the work not a thing, one minute delay after that similarly all this casteism he i'll quote from him i quote from the book think of the treatment which superstition has meted out to the depressed classes in our beloved india very rarely uses the country's name and see in that how this evil quality can breed heartless cruelty even among those who know the duty of the brotherhood because we have believe in brotherhood of man and because of superstition we say this is untouchable he cannot take water from this well see we, we don't love many of our people don't love our daughters or sons when they say that they are going to marry a partner from another caste they similarly how can you choose your partner it is my prerogative to choose your partner what a stupid thing and say if you marry that fellow you are finished and they go to the extent of killing killing their own daughters in tamil nadu it happens hey, my god i don't i am not sure this is uh, happens everywhere in india i would say can't take a, a, a understand with any any sense of justice so love is universal love transcends borders and casteism and all these divisions as go because jk wanted a world without borders because you must remember those who walk on the path of god exist not for himself but for others as for god himself in order that he may serve them you are here not to help yourself but help others there are things things which are important in the universe will wisdom 
and love we are here to do the will of god to understand his wisdom and love these are the three things so if you do that then you can walk on the path so this is the end of this book i think i have exceeded my time by a few five five minutes now now i request anybody everybody to ask or uh, to make their observations or give their comments or uh, if they you ask me to clarify anything i'll try to do my best thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you very much i am audible i am audible yes thank you thank you um, um, um professor uh, krishnamurthy sir well uh, it was a nice talk and um, we have learned a lot that um, actually we have never come across this book uh, first of all the good thing that you have said that uh, it's the first book of the krishnamurthy and we have never come across at the feet of the master and uh, the things that we have discussed really uh, would help uh, all of us and let us discuss uh, on what you have said and the philosophy of krishnamurti let us start with uh, professor srinivas and krishnamurti sir here okay because he has studied uh, on uh, the various aspects of krishnamurti and then we can have uh, uh, a beginning to this uh, discussion with uh, professor krishnamurti well professor krishnamurti sir please your view uh thank you sir uh, brother uh, professor krishnamurthy i am audible i am bhaskar yeah, yes 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 thank you brother. thank you brother thank, thank you. you brother you had a, a wonderful and uh, elaborate talk and uh, we had that satisfaction of reading the whole book through your words so it was an, a very good uh, this thing uh, what i want to just uh, clarify maybe discuss this point you were telling about discrimination and uh, the third one was of go- conduct good conduct so in his yes, later sir. talks of uh, jk he never talks about good conduct the reason he tells that uh, if i want to get clarification if you want a discrimination your mind goes on differentiating so it compares so all along after his uh, Uh, talks he was telling don't compare so comparison will lead you to uh, more chaos that was uh, i can understand so maybe uh, you can just clarify on that point dear brother discrimination and comparison are different comparison is kishamuthi is taller than baskaran baskaran is richer than sundaram this is comparison discrimination is to, to know whether baskaran walks on the path of god on the path of truth that is discrimination to identify discrimination is, is, is evaluating that thing or that person on its own merits without any comparison see jk never had wanted to have the school children to have any competition there is a way schools are different jk schools are different so comparison is uh, different and discrimination comparison between two things are between the, between a and b and c no discrimination is finding the true worth of that whether this coffee is really good that's all whether this coffee is good than better than the other no that is not discrimination to finding the worth of this book that is the discrimination whether it is this book will help me to walk on the path of truth then it's a good book otherwise it's not a good book the, the all the comparisons are odious comparisons are never never acceptable to jk and uh, discrimination is not comparison i think uh, i will discuss it again thank you okay thank you thank you for your uh, enlightenment thank you thank you thank you uh, professor uh, so well uh, one thing let me uh, add to this whenever we talk of comparison it requires uh, two entities to be discriminated but when you talk of discrimination it may uh, it may evolve within where you have a sense of feeling of what is right what is wrong what is good what is bad what is real what is unreal 
that sort of attitude is a, an attitude where you distinguish between say the entities which can bring you a sense of evolving uh, uh, good things within you and those things we, which would lead to uh, a path that is against the divine or going against the divine so discrimination is something which can uh, which can which can which can evolve within to speak of what is right what is wrong to tell things uh, and what is the right path to move on the path of the divine so that yes sir I, that is how yes, I sir. think Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. You're good. Thank you. Thank you. Well, let us move to uh, Krishna Murthy, sir. Srinivasan, yeah. sir. Well, um, a few words from your side. Well, in the meantime, let us move to Roma, ma'am. Yeah. Well, Srinivasan, sir. Yeah. Uh, ha, well, Hello. welcome, sir. Namaskar. Namaskaram, sir. Namaskar. Uh, good evening. Hello. Yes, sir, I'm listening. Audible. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Professor R.K., for your excellent presentation at the feet of the master. Yes, really. I am at the feet of the master, which is none other than uh, Professor R.K. in his master's voice. <laughs> He's really great. <laughs> He's I'm really an ordinary man. His master's voice, which is an HMV, the old uh, playing play record. And anyway, you highlighted beautiful points, which I observed in Vedas and scriptures, especially in Palanjali Maharishi Sutras. He has explained it very nicely and also included some of his novel thoughts leading to love, discrimination, faithfulness, and avarice, which I listen intently. I need to learn a lot from uh, Sri JK. Probably I may be doing that in course of time, because now I am uh, going through Professor Plavatsky also, I mean, uh, uh, concurrently. And next month, or a, a month after next month, is going to be the November uh, celebration in Moscow for the Russian Federation of Theosophical Society Seminar of Year and Seminar. At the same time, I am really wondering how you are able to dedicate much of your time in Brahmayana Sabha for more than 30 40 years in dealing with the uh, Professor uh, Theosophy of uh, Elena Blavatsky as well as uh, uh, Sri J.K. Heads up to you, sir, for your excellent presentation. I don't have much to say about it because you are very clear in your, uh, I mean, uh, deliverance. And uh, once again, we expect you to give more lectures on Theosophy and Jiru's in the days to come. Thank, Thank you, you much, sir. sir. I'm blessed. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Namaskar. Um, thank you very much, uh, Professor. Namaskar. namaskar. Um, yes, thank you. Uh. Thank you. My mantra from JK all my life was you want to be happy, don't have desires because desires will keep you going, 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 and not getting the time to be happy. So a desireless life will make you happy. But today, you have elevated me, you know, my understanding. Uh, today, you have given me my mantra that we have to go by believe in the will of God. We have to believe in His wisdom. And we have to believe in His love. So that, you know, the age old saying of God is love. I grew up knowing love is life and life is love. So, uh, you know, I feel very elevated. And as I always say, when I listen to our members of the philosophy family, one gets rejuvenated. And I'm sure all the family members who have heard you today, sir, will go back 
and you know practice the mantras of JK. They're such simple things. And today, I I mean this one hour beginning from the Theosophical Societies because uh, I would visit Pune and Ibisant as a center, Theosophical Center in Pune also. And uh, as a child, when we were taken there for our visits, oh, uh, I did not then understand, but I did feel the very vibes, you know, which uh, were very calm. And beginning uh, your talk with the Theosophical Society, and the efforts that went in to making humans, to making us human, you know, not just men and women, but real humans. Thank you, sir. I have so much food for thought today. Please, Thank you. Please very don't much. call me, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Please don't come in, sir. Satyam Sivam Sundaram. Thank you. Thank you. Namaskar. Thank you. So, Madam, well, one thing, uh, let me um, tell uh, on the position. Well, that lesson. You see, man is born with desire. Okay, there is, um, when we are in the world, we are with desire. But in satisfying one desire, it is not ending up. One desire, the sooner we get fulfilled with the desire, another desire is generated. So, desirelessness is a state very, uh, very, very difficult to attain because on the satisfaction of one desire, immediately another desire is getting up. So even though you have desire is fulfilled, the generation of another desire is making you hunger, number one. Okay, so satisfaction of a desire is leading to the generation of further desire. On the other way, suppose you have a desire and the desire is not satisfied, you are not able to attain the desire. So what will happen? that will bring in angriness. You will become angry because you have a desire and you are not able to get the fulfill that. So you turn to be angry. So if a desire is satisfied, it will lead to further desires, a problematic situation. So you are unhappy. If the desire is not satisfied, you become you become, you become angry, you become unhappy, so you are away from happiness. So Krishnamurti, uh, uh, Jiddu Krishnamurti uh, uh, he has really showed us a divine path wherein desireless is the only way to attain happiness. Okay, so even 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 Professor uh, Rajan Krishnamurti sir even pointed out that so you need to taste the desire in order to land in the state of desirelessness. You have a desire, you have a strong coffee, a desire for a coffee. Unless and until you have a taste of that coffee, you cannot practice the state of desirelessness for that coffee. Okay, let me, uh, this is how uh, I have taken this and uh, thank you, uh, Roma Madam, and thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, let us move to somebody else who wants to speak on uh, this topic. We have other members. Well, I'll wait for half a minute, then we'll move to uh, somebody, uh, uh, our admin and all. But, but in the meantime, one more thing let, uh, that comes to my mind. Okay. Um, uh, 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 it is something like this. When uh, you have uh, spoke, uh, you talked on uh, Krishna Murti, uh, Krishna Murti speaking on whenever we accept something, whenever we speak something, uh, uh, we should uh, pass through the test of three, whether it is true, whether it is kind, whether it is helpful to others. Well, a similar line of thought we can um, uh, we can we can find in uh, Socrates, uh, the three filter test. The yes, yes, sir. Well, uh, true, good, and useful. What Great men think what alike. Ah, great men think alike. <laughs> yes. So the similar uh, I could find in true, whether it is true, whether it is good, whether it is useful. That is the uh, triple test that we find in Socrates. So similar test we can find in Vidya Krishnamurti, sir. But uh, thank you. Thank you for this. Well, uh, I don't think anybody else um, wants to pick up. Uh, Dr. Rao, uh, may I just add a word? Yes, you know, when uh, Professor Arke was talking, he also told us about the beauty of silence. So once we go into that silence stage, then automatically we'll speak only when it is required, you know. So, you know, absolutely true, absolutely true, madam. Excellent. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Let's go ahead. Thank you. Professor uh, uh, Omnarayanaji, I think Professor B. Chandrika madam has come. Let us welcome her and uh, 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 request her to give her opinion about this. 
it will it will do the best well um, uh, if you like well technical madam you are welcome to your observation sir good evening everybody i am very sorry sir i couldn't uh, hear the speech of srinivas and krishnamurthy sir i was uh, a bit late uh, even then i could uh, i could see that uh, rajam krishna krishnamurthy's uh, speech was very nice it is it was based on uh, srinivas and sir's uh, uh, topic even then i am blessed i am very happy to say that i blessed with uh, sir's uh, um uh, sir note uh, note on that i am very much uh, uh, thankful to srinivasan sir for uh, for reminding me of uh, the vedas uh, family and uh, inviting me to say something on uh, this i wish uh, this uh, will go on and on you you, you may please write uh, more and more and uh, we can hear from you more and more thank you very much thank, thank you thank you madam thank you Thank you. Thank you. Let us move to our admin, Professor Pramod Madhav, for his views because he has also worked a lot on J. Krishnamurti and he has very much talked on J. Krishnamurti, sir. Uh, so let us invite Professor Pramod Madhav for uh, having his views, observations, and queries. Professor Madhav. Thank you, Dr. Rao. I am really grateful to uh, Krishnamurti ji for his wonderful deliberation. Thank you, sir. <coughs> um the very focused point of uh, the philosophy of uh, krishna murti that is freedom that man should attain freedom man has three uh, three types of personalities relating to his knowledge relating to his action or conduct and relating to his emotion that is love knowledge action and love these three should be free there should be free pursuit of wisdom there should be free pursuit of duty and there should be free pursuit of love suppose we are talking about knowledge then it should be free from the predicates it should be free from the perspectives it should be it should be free from our mental superimpositions it should be free from fond beliefs it should be free from dogmatic beliefs preoccupied thoughts it should be formless knowledge should be formless it should not take any ism any 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 personal opinion that's that is called knowledge proper if knowledge is not free from the dogmatic beliefs fond beliefs preoccupied thoughts this philosophy that philosophy this um, religion that religion this uh, message that message that is not knowledge at all similarly when we are doing our duty or action that is another part of human life another aspect of human life that should be like nishkam karma of the bhagavad gita that should not be for anything else i like this therefore i am doing this this is not that that means my doing is motivated by my likeness rag or dosa these two should not be the condition of our action that action should be based upon uh, based upon the goodness it should not be conditional it should not be for this or for that duty should be done for the sake of duty similar to immanuel kant also and also bhagavad gita as niskam karma this way we can uh, interpret the action which is actually free from the consequences free from the unnecessary attachments with consequences unnecessary attachment with our agency unnecessary attachment with the action itself there should not be any attachment neither with the agent agency nor with the action nor with the, the consequence action should be done duty should be done for the sake of duty similarly when we are talking about the emotion or love because sadhavan labhyata gyana if who can love that person can love who is not trapped by any condition mine and thine this is my community that is your community this is my religion that is your religion there is no the other there is no the other so love should be unconditional 
and that so these three jnana karma and bhakti and silence silence is that unconditional realm of knowledge where everything is culminated there is no duality so it is also i shall say krishna murti's philosophy somehow or other is uh, has been influenced by advaita philosophy because there is no two there is no two by which we can we, we can be discriminated it is distinctness it is distinctness that the another beautiful thing about krishna murti ji that uh, you should remain present in the present you should you should remain present in the present if you are not if you are not a present in the present that is your contradictory existence that you don't exist at all that means you are either biased by future future anxieties and past agonies unnecessary thoughts by that way your personality becomes a fleet personality your personality becomes a very weak personality and that was the position of arjuna in the battlefield be present in the present the moment you are present in the pre present your your consciousness your your thought will be very con very con um, concentrated single mindedness all these qualities will 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 be developed when we fix our presence in the present this is a very beautiful thing about um, um, krishna murthy's philosophy i am very much grateful to you sir about you particularly i shall say that you are not a formal speaker the moment you speak the moment you speak you become that so that i have marked your response when somebody ji is praising you appreciating you you don't accept it because the krishna philosophy is that not this not this not this neti 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 this is not what i want i, I want here i don't want praise or appreciation here come to the point come to the point this is this is this is called focusedness this is called concentration come to the point come to the point so this is an attitude sir this is the way of life you live and that that, that is that is well perceived and felt from your talk from your personality so you you have become uh, that level of consciousness so that that is reflected in your behavior in your wisdom and in your commitment commitment means love in your love in your commitment you are very you are a very committed speaker we learned many things in details from you about krishna murti's philosophy but basically uh, um, very famous book of uh, krishna murti freedom from the known freedom from the known this is a very famous book very small book and very famous freedom from the known that means whatever you have known uh, since today I mean, since my, so, so long of your life be free from that whatever you have not known that is your past you forget your past knowledge past attachment and you be present in the present so our knowledge also binds us when we claim that i know this i am an expert on this i am a scientist i am a philosopher i am so and so that is our limitation be from be free from that and always make your mind make your research very fresh very fresh be alert in the present situation that, then the door of transformation will open for you then you can see everything clearly distinctly um, um, also vividly comprehensively you can see the reality and you can go ahead go ahead thank you sir we are really grateful and we shall invite you again and again to deliver talks in our our platform your talk thank, thank been, you sir thank your you your talk your talk has been recorded and it will be uploaded in youtube tomorrow thank you sir thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you professor uh, that very nicely uh, well professor rak you want to say something yes please send the uh, youtube link to me also yes sir that will be fair that will be thank fair. that will be uh, thank you well, thank you sir uh, well two to three important things came from professor das well uh, one thing he tried to highlight on uh, unconditionally free that the book given by j krishna murthy that you have unconditionally free and he has pointed another book free from the no okay so here one thing let me uh, 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 let me let me let me uh, 
inform the audience, which I also uh, learned it very recently, that we should go with three things. Learning, that is the first phase. It is like learning ABCD. Without knowing the ABCDs, we cannot think of giving up. Like uh, Professor uh, Krishnamurti said, uh, that uh, the taste of coffee, you should have the taste of coffee in order to give away coffee, uh, the desire for coffee, you should have the taste of coffee. So learning is first of all important. That whatever we learn, learn, there should be an attitude to unlearn. That is where you can bring it new. Whatever you have learned, try to unlearn. That gives a scope to relearn. So learning, unlearning or learn, then unlearn, then relearn. That should be three-way process. Even I think we can find it in Krishnamurti's um, writings also, wherein we can transform ourselves. Okay, the three-way process. Even um, uh, 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 um, um, in transformation of man also, we can find similar things. Where if you want to evolve, you have to give away the same thing so that new things come up. We relearn things. So very nicely uh, said, very nicely done. Thank you, Professor Das, for your views. Uh, I to thank Professor Krishnamurti, sir, uh, for his nice talk. And one more personal experience. Um, uh, well, this is not uh, in context of this, uh, uh, um, uh, this lecture, but still connected with this lecture. Last week, I was in uh, Chennai. Okay. So in connection with the admission of my son. Okay. I was staying somewhere uh, near the Kepak Stadium. Okay, now there was one hotel called Sangeeta Hotel. Okay, it was serving very good food. Okay, I had all desires to move to the hotel, have food there. And somehow on that day it was raining a bit. I thought to be inside, so I saw a bookstore just in front of that hotel. Old books are being sold, and that man, I asked him for philosophy books. And he said, well, I have philosophy book of J. Krishnamurti. Then I said, well, sir, you told me. There were enough books in one bag full of Krishnamurti books. I say, You are lucky. I am lucky. And the man whose books were, they, he is also M.V. Krishnamurti. Okay, oh. An advocate. Maybe, maybe, maybe he has died and maybe his sons or his, his family members have sold them in the old market. And I collected around 13 books. I feel very sorry. Later on, I felt I should have got all those books. You, he, well, you see, you see the coincidence. And today, I have I listened to someone again, Radham Krishnamurti. Four Krishnamurtis, and and introduced by Srinivasan Krishnamurti. Four Krishnamurtis together. Today. So I just share my experience. How how um, recently I got some books of Krishnamurti, and uh, it could be really helpful. For my father's death. And in addition, another Tamil book, translated into Tripura. Also, I got from that store. Beautiful book. Few comments, few lines I have produced. A beautiful book. Well, thank you. This is something out of the uh, Hello. I would like to say a few words. We listened to JK, J. Krishnamurti's philosophy through. Professor R. Krishnamurti, and he was introduced by Srinivasan Krishnamurti, who is the son of Professor S. Krishnamurti, who was his professor, that is uh, Professor R. K. S. Professor, and uh, Professor and HOD of the same college, Mujara College, Madurai. This I would like to share with you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Well, uh, so many coincidences. So many coincidences. <laughs> all, all, all with Krishnamurti. All with Krishnamurti. Well, um, uh, I, 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 I keep the floor open for another four or five minutes. If anybody wants to speak on the session, they are welcome. Uh, even we have it as a professor in English, Banorangan South as well. If he wants to say something, um, he is welcome. Uh, otherwise, let's move to our admin um, for declaring this meeting. Well, we have learned a lot um, uh, from, from uh, Professor Rajan. Uh, Rajan Krishnamurti, uh, sir, will uh, we'll like to invite him again uh, on the thoughts of Krishnamurti. Well, during that time, even I, when purchased some books for Krishnamurti, I will also be prepared on the subject. So, okay, thank you. Well, uh, well, I see nobody. Well, let's move. Let's move to our admin, uh, Professor Das, for declaring the meeting.
sir regarding krishna murthy's book i shall say one thing that uh, i have also more than 20 books of uh, krishna murthy <coughs> uh, if you if you if you if you will be able to read one book only any one book of krishna murthy you can be able to read all books because the form is same by uh, suppose you are going through um, uh not freedom from the known if you digest this book only very small book you can read, read all um, understand all the books of krishna murthy because the the the, the, the form of uh, the format of thinking is so uh, clear that the same thing will be available in all books of krishna murthy this is the weak, uniqueness uh anyway i thank all of you i solicit uh, your benign presence sir, in the meantime somebody sir manorajan sir he has raised his hand then well, let us yes 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 yes, yes over to manorajan sir 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 good evening to all so really i am very feel elated elevated to attend this class enlightening class so it is my request is be visit to katak there is a krishnamurthy foundation in puri ghat also yes, you will find all books there and generally the contact seminars in the sundays uh, every sunday so when i pay visit i visit uh, the classes i attend the classes so really nice class uh, i was little busy so we'll discuss later so uh, i feel very much not to say anything so i have almost all books i have so very nice class nice uh, deliberation by uh, rajam thank you pranam frustrations on to his notice speech is very so we should not miss that uh, krishna murthy is unique in all the approach for philosophy so thank you thank you we we'll discuss thank you sir thank, thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you good night sir you want to say something well yeah okay anyway let's go to our okay, okay. So, so this is now time to um, end the session we are really grateful to all of you for your benign presence and very beautiful participation discussion thank you uh, all we are really grateful to all and i shall thank you sir thank uh, we shall you request uh, sir um, sir please select your next topic and we shall invite you sir thank, thank you sir. thank you thank you this meeting is now declared closed thank you